And I remember sitting there sobbing and just thinking, no, this wasn't acceptable for me anymore. That's one of the reasons that I set up my business. There's times when I've worked when I shouldn't have been working and perhaps I should have stopped and everything else. But at the end of the day, I did my best. But there were a few things that really, really did help me to get some of my time back to stay in control a little bit more. You're watching the Stable Business Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Bush, and I'm here to chat all things equine business with a new episode every week from me or the best in the biz. Now, before we get started, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell to be notified when a new episode drops. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about how you can find some more time in your business because I know it's one of those things that I've juggled and struggled with over the years and I think it's always really difficult especially when we're doing things that we love in our businesses how do we make sure that we actually can manage that time how do we get those boundaries right how do we do all of that stuff and I don't want you to wait till you are alive <laughs> Looking at hindsight, because hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Going, oh, I should have done better. And the reason that this matters to me most in working with so many equine businesses over the years, like one of the biggest drivers for me, especially when I started my business, was that I wanted to be able to spend time with my children. I wanted to be a better mother. At the time, my kids were very small. I was working several different jobs. I've had a few different jobs, <laughs> but I remember one of them. I wanted to go to the school play and I I couldn't get the time off work. I wasn't allowed the time off work. And then when I finally managed to negotiate it, then I couldn't get the time to go to the school play because they'd run out of tickets. And I remember sitting there sobbing and just thinking, no, this wasn't acceptable for me anymore. And that's one of the reasons that I set up my business. But actually... I won't lie, my girls are my girls are old now. They're yeah, adults, pretty much. And I'm ashamed to admit, even with hindsight, I feel like there's times when I could have done better, especially with this business, there's times when I've worked when I shouldn't have been working and perhaps I should have stopped and everything else. But at the end of the day, I did my best. But there were a few things that really, really did help me to get some of my time back to stay in control a little bit more. And yeah, so that I could have days when I could head off to Pony Club or days when I just said, no, we're going to do this today and we're going to have those fun days. And I want to share some of those hacks with you because I feel that many of them will work for equine businesses as well. So like you might be thinking, but Jenny, you, you sit in an office most of the day and you're coaching businesses. Why, why would that work in my business when I'm actually out on the road or I've got horses and, and whatever? But there are a few things that I feel that you can implement in your business to bring those time, time restraints back and actually feel like you've got some more control over your time. The first thing that I think is really, really important is to actually plan your time intentionally. So if you can time block, that really, really helps. But be intentional with when you're going to start, when you're going to finish and set those times. I always put it in my calendar. My calendar is boss. Everything is run off my calendar. When I'm sitting down to work, my calendar's on my phone, my calendar's on the computer, the calendar is boss and everything is in there. Like every single thing, I have a whole load of routines and checklists and I actually save it into the calendar directly so that when I'm going, okay, I need to work on this, I can work through my routines. And I will talk in a future episode all about my routines. If you wish, do let me know if you feel that that would be something that you would enjoy listening to about routines that we can build in. So with that being said, when we're thinking about time, the other thing that I do intentionally with my time and planning that I feel you can do in your business too is to batch similar tasks together. Now, batching is often something that's spoken about, especially around creating your content, creating yeah, stuff like when you sit down at the computer. Actually, there's things that you probably do in your business that you could batch together. So do you do times when you're doing calls? Do you do times when you're doing admin? Do you do times when you're doing your social media? Do you do times when you're on, I mean, maybe you run a yard, maybe you've got times when you're on the, the yard with the horses. Can you actually make sure that you're batching similar tasks together rather than going, I'm going to do 30 minutes with the horses then I'm going to come in then I'm going to ask my emails then I'm going to go out and then I'm going to teach a lesson or however it works with you depending on what your business is. Like what could you do in terms of batching? When you look at things, can you batch? things together I mean it's almost like if you were traveling to different places you try and batch all the place all the appointments that are in that same space together 
Can you do the same with everything else? So have a look at everything that's in your in your diary, everything that you do, write it all down and just think, how can I avoid switching tasks too often? Because every time we switch tasks, it changes. So yeah, think about that and look at those. So yeah, have those zones. So sometimes it could be a case of batching it in, in terms of a zone. So you could have office tasks, on the road tasks, anywhere tasks, home tasks, and you could batch them in zones. Or yeah, or batch them in terms of what the actual tasks are. So I actually like to batch all my emails together, write all my emails together. I also like to batch all my podcasts together, but sometimes it doesn't happen. Like in the case of this one, not happening. But if you can, it makes it so much easier because you're not then switching from task to task to task, which will actually help you to stay more productive. It will keep your brain focused. And yeah, it just will save you a lot of time because you're not jumping from task to task. So number one is batching. The second thing that I want to talk about that I feel that you can implement really quickly and easily and save some time on is to actually create yourself a series of templates or automations that you can have done and they work for you. So what do I mean by that? So anything that's repetitive. So do you have things that you say to people over and over again in terms of emails or messages or DMs? Like, how do you want to respond to things? If you can have those all written down and then you you have a look at all those repetitive tasks and then think, how can I make this simpler? How can I make this easy? So I like to create templates. And in some email servers and some email software, you have to look, depends on what you use. But you have the opportunity to use drafts and save them as templates. So actually, you can just, when you're replying to somebody, you just pull up a template and then edit it. And then, yeah, then you're keeping it consistent as well. But it saves me masses of time. The other way you could do this is just look at those automated, all those tasks that you're doing, those repetitive tasks, and say, is there any other way to automate this? There are tools online like Zapier. I think it's called Zapier. I call it Zapier. It might be Zapier, um, but I call it Zapier, which uh, help to connect different programs. So when something happens here, it then pings the zap. That's sort of the way I like to, and the zap bridges it. And then that goes into something else. So for example, I use Zapier. So when somebody joins my Facebook group, I put their details into a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet then automatically adds it to my mailing list if they've agreed to sign up for the mailing list. And then the mailing list automatically sends the email so I only do one thing which is just add them to the spreadsheet and the rest is done it could even be a case of like, tracking your daily income so I have yeah, a zap again that works between Stripe and PayPal and then it puts them all onto a sheet as the payments come in and I can automatically look and see how much money I've made this week or month there's so many ways that you can actually automate tasks And it could even be something manually that you could automate and just make a bit easier. But we don't know how to save the time unless we're actually taking time out to have a look at this stuff. So this is why it's really important to write down all the things that you're doing that are repetitive and where can you save time around that. Now, as a bonus for this episode, I want to share some life tips as well because I know business and life, it kind of connects. You're not likely to be somebody that doesn't have a life outside your business. I hope if you've been working with me, I hope you know that actually the whole purpose of our business is so that we can have a life. But we also need to be saving some time in our lives too. So some of the things that I've done in order to help me to get more time is like I have, this this is my mega tea. I have this two-week meal plan that I created, well, I created it from somebody else's meal plan. This This is a total cheat. So I Googled like family meals for four or something like that. And then I doubled it. And, and I think it was even budget family meals for four because I hate spending my hard earned money on food. There's four of us in this house, four adults pretty much. And my food bill is massive. They eat me out of house and home, especially while it's been summer holidays. It's been crazy. So I Googled this, just like some meal plans with grocery lists. And then I got the grocery list. And the meal plan. So I could immediately go, right, these are all the dinners that we've got. I literally copied the grocery list 
straight into online shopping. Thank you very much, Tesco's. Not sponsored by Tesco's in any way, but yeah, I did it at Tesco's. And then all I do is every two weeks in between, I go to the shop. So I get the fresh stuff. Every two weeks, I literally go back to Tesco's and find the last shop and just add to basket and then just tweak through. I don't even add them all separately. It saves me so much time. And then, of course, when it's delivered, I then don't have to go out. I'm not sure it's very good in terms of my exercise. I'd rather be riding horses. I'm sure you would. So that's my first thing to save some time, super time. Get those groceries delivered. It makes it just makes life so much stressful. And I think we have to reduce as business owners. One of the things that really, really helps me, and it's a strange tip when it comes to time, is just trying to reduce decision fatigue. But when we're not having to make those decisions, it just feels like we flow more. And one of the ways that we also do that is you'll probably notice, and if not, you're going to notice now, but I tend to wear the similar clothes all the time. And this is kind of something that I think I got off. I don't, somebody was talking about it, but if you notice, like a lot of the big bods, I think it was, I mean, who's the guy that does Apple? I can't even think who was the guy that did that? Steve Jobs. He always wore the same things. So does Mark Zuckerberg. Is it Mark Zuckerberg? Well, you know, Facebook guy. Anyway, they always wear the same clothes. And I find that that is such a good tip because I don't then have to think about what to wear. And I've always found it's easier for men anyway, because they just seem, everything just seems to match everything else. But for us women, not so easy. But actually, when I just stick to those staple outfits that I can wear, like this hoodie that I've got on right now, or my stripy top that you see a lot, or my <laughs> crime business gilet that I just put over something, I find when I'm not having to choose my outfits, actually, it keeps me on brand, but it saves that de- decision fatigue. And then it saves me so much time. Because I can then use my time and my brain's power for things that matter so much more. So the other thing that I would say in terms of time savings is actually to look what you could outsource. And I know this is something we often talk about in business and you think, okay, I could be outsourcing to a VA and I could be doing all this stuff. Now, one of the key points I need to make with all of that is if you don't have systems in place already, like those routines, like what we term as standard operating procedures. And it's something that I teach in Stable Foundations Hub. But if you haven't got those in place already, actually you'll find that outsourcing is really, really hard because if you haven't got the time now, you won't have the time to actually hand everything over. So get those in place first of all and actually take that time to sit down and go, this is how I want everything run. So like same as we've done, writing down all your repetitive tasks, do the same with your the stuff that you could outsource. But one of the big super savers for me, saves me about two or three hours a week, is I have a cleaner, right? Now, my mother thinks that this is so extravagant. And even I was at the pony club at the weekend and somebody said, oh, because I was helping plait up the ponies for a competition. And, uh, and somebody said to me, oh, but you'd just Sunday, you'd, you'd be cleaning if it was, if you weren't here, Denny. And I was like, no, I wouldn't. I'd be actually enjoying my Sunday. Sundays are for me and my family to enjoy and to, you set time on things that you want to enjoy. And she what? I said, no, have a cleaner. And she went, oh, wow, the rich and the other half live. And actually, right, can I tell you, my cleaner's not expensive. My cleaner charges me £25 an hour and she comes for an hour a week. But literally, she gets the whole house done so much quicker than I would do it because actually what I found, especially being a mother of two girls and they make a mess and it just gets me so angry. I think it raging I get raging raging hump when I'm cleaning because I just feel very like I've spent a lot of money on this I was disrespecting this everything's all over the place plus my daughter she's gonna hate me for telling you this but my daughter like used to like to hide things in her bedroom so when I was tidying up if she hadn't eaten her sandwiches at school she decided that she didn't like her sandwiches she'd hide them somewhere in her bedroom like I did find them in the monopoly box once and <laughs> But then that really, like, I, I just, it was just horrendous. So now, for my own mental well being, I have a cleaner and she comes every single week and it's the best outsourcing that I've ever done. Because now that time I'm spending focusing on things that matter in my bit, like moving my business forward to make more money. But also it means that I've got two, three hours extra time that I can devote to my family, my children. 
my lovely husband, and so on. So they're my top time-saving tips. I think you could be able to in- incorporate into your business. I would love to know which one of these you found as an aha. If you've had any like, oh, that's genius moments. I'm not sure any of that is genius, but hopefully it's helped you to go, I could recover some time because it's your most valuable asset. So are you using it wisely? Are you using it on things that are going to create you more wealth or are you just wasting it and dwindling it away? So I hope this helped you. I look forward to hearing what you, what you felt on this. Do head up, head over, head up. Head up I don't know. Do head over to Instagram and find me at Eggpine Business Assistant. Let me know. Screenshot, share that you've watched it. Tag me and let me know what one tip you're going to take away. Or if you've got any tips that you think I should add to this or that you could share with other business owners, I'd be really excited to hear those too. So thanks for joining me and till next time, I'll catch you later.